did you want to um, try testing your screen share like we talked about? Yeah, I'm trying to find out where the play function is on PowerPoint. Uh, okay, it's in slideshow. So, okay. I'm going to do it now. Is it showing? Yes, it is. Okay, so I can just click through, click through, click through. Do you have Bill's report? Oh, let me grab that. Okay. So yeah, I should be able to do this with no problem. Just I'd be ready in case I have an issue, but I shouldn't. Now that I have oriented myself to how it works, I feel more confident now. Excellent. Oh, I'll hit stop share, so I'm not sharing anymore. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I can rename myself, so I'm going to do that too. there. Oh, I don't know if you also, when you have a minute, if you want to make me a host or not. Yeah, yeah, I just had you as a co-host. Okay, I see. Yeah, there's two Tom R's in the chat. I'm just trying to confirm if um they're both real. Yeah, I just saw that. Uh...
I see there's another person in the chat, but I feel like we can wait until actually noon before we start letting people in, except for like Tom. He probably wants to test the sound levels and things. Hi, Tom. Sorry, I was holding you in the waiting room because I had no idea there were two of you. Looks like you're on mute. How's my sound? It's okay. echoey. It's it's echoey, but it's clear. Oh, I'll yeah, I got the volume. I'll I'll take the level way down. Cool. Yeah, it sounds to me that it's due to the acoustics of the room. That's my impression. Uh, it's a big room. Yeah, it's gonna. Yeah. Yeah. Barb is uh, behind. So yeah, I'm trying to join on my phone and I'll try not to join the audio. Yeah, that should probably um, uh, oh, I, cover up. Yeah, I guess I'm in. Okay, and I did not join audio. So that way you can see, you know, we can pass the camera around. So it's good. But Barb is late. Uh, she said she's on her way. I don't know what the deal is. Sure. It's actually a pretty nice room. Hi, Dave. Hey, Dave. Hey, how's it going? Not, not bad. It's going all right. How are you? Good, good. Yeah, sorry to not pop in earlier. I was just polishing up some work for today. Okay. Um, yeah, and I getting some emails, people are RSVPing and they are emailing me how to get in. So Melissa, can I just forward these over to you? It's gonna be hard to you know, facilitate while also trying to respond to people's emails. Yes, I can forward the Zoom link that Sam sent out earlier to anybody who's on the list. Okay. Yeah, and so some people are RSVPing. Um, yeah, and of course they should do that. Um, I'm also getting emails like, I'm a member, please send the link. I mean, from names that I recognize. Uh, so, yeah, Melissa, if I can just send those over to you. Yes, uh, I I will email the, I have the Zoom link email uh, ready to forward as soon as I get those addresses. Awesome. Thank you, thank you. You're welcome. All right, looks like it's noon. So I'm gonna start admitting um, folks that are not CC, if that's okay with everybody. Yes. Please go ahead, yeah. So. Yeah. Hello. Okay, I see uh, I'm with the phone number, starting with 708. If you could please rename yourself 
um, your first and last name. So yeah, you know, or just you uh, yeah, just say who you are, and I can um, take care of the naming. That works because too. it might be hard on a phone. Yeah. And also show your pronouns if you want. Um, uh, it says Barbara. Okay. Hey. I don't know how to remute. So Barbara, you, Barbara Dahlgren? Kind of. Yeah, I'll be there shortly. Uh, are you at home or I'm just kind of getting an idea? Okay. In transit. Oh, good. All right. If you, I mean, if you have Zoom on your phone, you should be able to mute it from your phone. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. I only know how to unmute. <laughs> okay. But try swiping. I think if you swipe right, that will mute Zoom on your phone. Um, anyway, yeah, so people are joining. Um, and still getting some emails and contacts from people who are asking for links and stuff like that. So we'll give people a few minutes to come in. Feel free to make yourself comfortable, get a beverage, take a mile break. Um, you know, once. We basically, once we basically have folks who RSVP'd in the meeting, then we uh, will probably, you know, get going with welcome and introductions. Hey, Bruce. Is it? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Just uh, so, we have members of our IT committee who are doing tech support. Um, who are here right now. So technically another camera. Folks have technical issues. If you could put them in the chat, that would be best rather than us trying to talk through them during the meeting. Um, but yeah, we are trying to help people out with any tech issues. Hello, everyone. Hey, Jonathan. Hello. And yeah, all right. So um, a few more people have joined. I think 
we can probably get started very soon. Just wanted to ask if um, you know, I know some folks have joined new. If you can please put your first and last name. Um, if yeah, if you can rename to have your first and last name, that you know we all know who is here in the room with us. And um, yeah, you can put your pronouns as well. Uh, you know, if you're an officer, you can uh, put that identity, you know, in, in your name. Um, yeah, so that's, that's very helpful and, you know, especially helpful for the facilitators, um, you know, so that we can know, uh, know who's here and who we're calling on. Um, so, yeah, why don't we get started this uh, 12.07 and we want to keep things moving today. Um, so, um, if people want to look at the event page, we have our agenda on there so you can get a sense of, uh, you know, what's on the agenda today and what the timing is. Um, and, you know, we'll have a few breaks. Um, so we can share that in the chat now, um, you know, so that people can see the agenda. But yeah, um, let's go to the, the welcome and introductions. Uh, I'm Dave Schwab. I use he, him pronouns. I'm co-chair of the Wisconsin Green Party. And um, I'm based here in lovely Madison. Um, and also involved with the Four Lakes Green Party as my local chapter. Um, yeah, and so now if we can just go around the room and if people can do very brief introductions, um, you know, please keep it to one minute or less. Um, so we can stay on time here, but you can just let us know your name. Uh, you can share your pronouns, where you live, um, and also let us know uh, if you're involved with the Green Party and what your involvement is. Uh, if you're a member, uh, please do let us know if you're a dues paying member in good standing because uh, we especially appreciate that. Or uh, there might be folks here who have not quite joined yet as a member. And um, we're interested to hear from you as well and hoping that you'll join. So yeah, um, again, name, pronouns, where you are, and let us know, uh, are you involved in the Green Party and how? Um, or if you're not yet involved, then just really quick, what's something that you're interested in uh, about the Green Party? All right, um, so I hope that wasn't too much, uh, so mm -hmm. I will, uh, pass it over to Sam. And then I think um, we'll just we'll just call on people to go because that's the quickest way to do this. Uh, go ahead, Sam. Thanks, Dave. Um, so as uh, Dave mentioned, my name's Sam. Uh, my pronouns are he, him. I live in Madison. Uh, I'm a state co-chair of the uh, Wisconsin Green Party. I'm also co-chair of the Forex Green Party. Um, that's how I'm involved uh, and looking forward to today's meeting. Uh, so I'll just go down the list. Looks like the next person on there is Melissa Minkoff. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Melissa Minkoff. My pronouns are she, her. I live in Madison. Um, I am on the Green Party Coordinating Council. I'm the representative for District 2. I'm also uh, co-chair of the IT committee. I'm co-chair of the Four Lakes Green Party as well, and I'm on the national committee as a delegate alternate. Great. Thanks, Melissa. Uh, Tom, you're next. Hi, um, I'm Tom uh, Rodman in the Milwaukee area at Bayview, specifically on the uh, CC or State Steering Committee, um, IT Committee, um, Membership Outreach, and, and some others. 
been in the Greater Milwaukee Green Party since about 2015. Um, Thank you, Mike. Uh, <clears throat> Mike McAllister of Greater Milwaukee Greens, uh, member of the National Com Committee. Uh, he him. Uh, maybe we should the the folks who are in Mil who are uh, in the library in Milwaukee we could go around the room for them at some point. Yeah, sure. Um, are they signed on with a certain account? No, um, Bruce. Could you say who you are? Bruce Hickforth of Cottonwalk. Been a member of the Green Party for 35 years. Been founding members of the State Party. I've been co-chair three times. I've been secretary and treasurer numerous occasions. Now I'm just a member. Page and four. Okay, great. Thank you. Um, so yeah, uh, so so Tom, if you are with other people, um, well, yeah, maybe if, if someone wants to get on Stack and they're not logged in, you know, just put your name in the chat and then the word Stack. But we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, all right, so next up is Bill. Bill Bryan, he, him, Greater Milwaukee uh, Green Party, I'm state treasurer. I'm a retired steel worker. And if you're done, uh, you can say pass or over, which uh, makes it easier for us to tell when people are done talking so that we don't accidentally cut you off. Um, thanks, Bill. Barbara? Hi, I'm Barbara Dahlgren. I'm the secretary of the Green Party. Um, I am with the Greater Milwaukee Green Party. That's my local. I'm from West Dallas. And um, I work on the uh, elections committee as well as uh, many other committees. Um, glad to be here. Thanks. Bye. Pass. Thank you. Uh, Krista? Hi there. Thank you. Um, I'm Krista Cleary. I live in River Falls, Wisconsin. She, her. I am a new member of the Green Party. I know very little about the Wisconsin Green Party, and I'm looking forward to hearing more. Awesome. Welcome. Um, James, you're up next. James Bankard. Hello, James Bankard, uh, Madison, Wisconsin. I've uh, been voting mostly Green Party since 2000 and have um, recently joined the membership committee. Looking forward to uh, working on getting new members. So welcome, Krista, and I uh, hope we can work on that. Looking forward to hearing about that. Thank you. Great. Um, Joe Nathan, ZB Kingfisher. Hello, everybody. Uh, I'm here in Ashland, Wisconsin. And my pronouns are he, him, and I've been involved with the Green Party, I guess it's going on 23, 24 years now since the Nader LaDuke Millennial Campaign and uh, had lots of episodes in the, um, yeah, Green Party adventures over the decades. Um, I've done conservation work and teaching, classroom teaching, math, science, and Ojibwe language, culture, history. I'm in great spirits today. I have my shirt, it's plural. <laughs> um, I, I've been the co-chair and I'm currently co-chair of uh, Policy Platform and love supporting uh, camaraderie of all things green. Thanks everybody, pass.
Thank you. Uh, AJ. Hi, my name is AJ. Um, I use they them pronouns. Uh, I live here in Milwaukee in the River West neighborhood. Um, I've been a green since uh, 2007, uh, where I have worked on state parties as well as on the national committee, a former steering committee chairperson, as well as a former uh, chairperson for the Wisconsin Green Parties when I lived here almost a decade ago and an organizer for 20 years. So over. Great, welcome. Um, Lily? Hi, um, I'm Lily Tong. You heard they pronouns. Um, the reason why I'm here is because I thought the Democrats and the progressives were me. And then I realized, no, they're establishment. What am I doing? And so um, I've been helping somebody that lives in my co-op um, a little bit with you know what he's doing. So now I'm thinking, I, I gotta I gotta stand up and fight um, with y'all because I am you all. Um, so I just finished yoga class. I teach um, health and PE with the Madison Metropolitan School District. Um, because I want to do something. I want to like wake up. The kids aren't awoke, awoke. they're sleeping. So um, yeah, so that's why, why I, I'm going to put them in the money. <laughs> so thanks, thanks for thanks for keeping the fight going. On. So I'm with you. Fast. Awesome. Great, thanks for being here. I, I was going to ask uh, where you're from and then you said Madison. I was like, yes. <laughs> um. <laughs> Yeah. Okay. Awesome. Cool. Um, well, I th okay. And then uh, Kay Mann is here. All right. So Kay, I'm not sure if you heard, we're doing um, very quick introductions, one minute or less. So if you could tell us quickly your name, pronouns, if you wish, uh, where you're from, and then what your involvement with the Green Party is. Hi, Dave. Hi, everyone. Um, this is Kay. I'm in Milwaukee, and I'm a Green Party member. I'm actually quite a little bit um, spread out politically, a little thin. So my Green Party affiliation is more one of solidarity and doing what I can when I can and supporting the chapter's work and the party's work. Um, so, um, yeah. So I'm also a member of the Revolutionary Socialist Organization Solidarity, and I teach um, uh, sociology at UW Stevens Point for half the week. So that's a little. So hello, everyone. Awesome. Well, it was great to well, hear your I, voice. I, I'll also say I'm a past co-chair of um, way back in 2014 of the Angela um, Walker campaign for um for sheriff that was endorsed by the green party and it was so that's one of the, one of the things i've been involved with in the past thank you yeah right on great well thanks for being here it's yeah it's really great to hear your voice again um cool and oh and i see a new member just joined actually renewed so I'm going to send them right over to you, Melissa, because they may want to join this meeting. Um, cool. But I think, so now everyone has had a chance to introduce themselves. Um, is there anyone who has not had a chance to introduce themselves? Um, yeah, I think we all have. OK, great. So yeah, so let's keep it rolling. Um, and then I'm not sure, uh, but let me just put right in the chat, once again, a link to uh, the event page that has today's agenda. And so people can kind of follow along and see where we're at. And, uh, you know, we can try to work together to stay on time and, you know, keep this a really productive discussion. Um, just a couple of real quick things today. So this is our actually our first winter gathering in, I don't know, maybe ever, um, but Wisconsin Green Party previously had two 
uh, state membership meetings a year, the spring gathering and the fall gathering, we recently decided that um, our gatherings are so great that we want to do four a year. So we are um, introducing the winter gathering and the summer gathering and hopefully give membership, uh, you know, more ways to participate in the party and just have more space for discussions. Um, so this is the first winter gathering that I'm aware of. Um, we also don't really have much in the way of party business today, or we don't have any thing like proposals or elections or uh, bylaws or platform to vote on. Um, so yeah, we don't, we don't have to worry about that as much. And we also made this shorter than our recent gatherings because, um, you know, we often have really good discussion at our gatherings, but they also can be multiple hours, five, six hours or more. And that's just a lot to ask anyone. Um, and yeah, so we, we made today's gathering three hours with breaks. Um, it'll probably fly by. And, uh, you know, we'll all have to be mindful, especially me, of trying to keep things quick and moving. Um, so, yeah, uh, everyone who is a, a dues paying member of the Wisconsin Green Party is, um, you know, entitled to participate in our membership meetings. Uh, as I mentioned, we all, we all do also welcome new members, you know, if you haven't quite paid your dues yet. Uh, we hope you will today. Um, and yeah, uh, so we wanna hear from our members uh, what you want the Green Party to work on and how we can help you to get involved. Um, and our facilitation process is pretty simple. So our, our two co-chairs, Sam and myself, will be facilitating. Um, how we do that is if folks would like to speak, then we use a, what we call the progressive stack if you would like to speak, then put the word stack into the chat. Um, you can put your name as well, especially if you're on someone else's account. And so then we will try to call on people in the order that they get themselves on stack. What makes it progressive stack is we'll try to prioritize people who haven't spoken much. Um, and we do want to avoid getting into kind of back and forth debates as well as kind of people saying things that they've already said. Um, you know, again, we want this to be quick and productive and we don't, um, yeah, we wanna be just respectful of people's time. So then uh, when you're speaking, uh, if you can try to remember when you are, are done, if you could use a word like pass or over or just say I'm done, um, so that way the, the facilitators will know that you're done and we won't jump in and interrupt you and go to the next person um, by accident. So, um, yeah. And then, like I said, we won't be voting on anything today. Uh, so we don't really have to talk about our democratic uh, voting process. Um, although if people are interested, you know, feel free to put any questions in the chat. Um, so yeah, today we'll have a couple statements from the co-chairs to kind of spark some thinking. Um, then we will have some brief reports from committees and local chapters. Uh, then we'll have a break and then at 1 p.m. we'll start the discussion of what would you like the Green Party to work on. We recently sent a survey to our members asking what issues matter to them, what they'd like the Green Party to work on. Um, so now we want to hear more from you about the issues that are important to you and how we can organize together as Greens to make a real difference and build an effective movement. Um, and one of our slogans in the Green Party is don't shoot on us. <laughs> um, so that means if we, if someone says the Green Party should do this, then we say, great. And remember, we're the Green Party. So can you help us to, um, you know, do what it is you're talking about? 
Uh, so just some issues that have come up in the survey and initial discussions include climate change, clean water, affordable housing, education and daycare, nonviolence in our communities, anti-war and anti-imperialism, racial justice, and man-made environmental disasters like the recent derailment and chemical fire in East Palestine, Ohio. So this is your party. What would you like the Green Party to work on? But I don't want to get too far ahead of us um, because that's just to give you a taste of what will come a little later. Uh, so now um, we'll have brief statements from the co-chairs and I was asked to talk about the current political situation. So in November, um, we talked about the 22, 2022 elections and how they showed people aren't very happy with Democratic Party rule, but they don't find Republicans appealing either. So nationally and in Wisconsin, we've settled into a political stalemate uh, and stagnation with both parties blocking each other in prolonged gridlock. That's become the new normal. Uh, meanwhile, the Biden administration has normalized not just low expectations, but expectations of the bare minimum at most, such as no help with inflation and the mounting cost of living, housing, food, health care, child care, education, and other essentials, no raise in the minimum wage, no health care reform or even public option, uh, no paid sent kid family leave, uh, alone among developed nations, no significant criminal justice reform after the largest movement in US history, no action on voting rights, uh, refusal to codify the Roe v. Wade decision for 50 years. Uh, so the Democrats have allowed abortion bans to take hold in states across the country, including Wisconsin, uh, because they never actually have acted at the federal level on abortion. Uh, much, climb, uh, much hyped climate bill that environmental justice advocates call the Climate Suicide Pact because of its huge expansion of fossil fuel extraction. On the vast majority of their campaign promises, the Democrats didn't deliver and barely even tried. And perhaps the best illustration of the Democrats' betrayal is their overwhelming vote to force a bad contract on the rail workers' throats and remove their right to strike when the workers were just trying to get decent sick leave, decent work conditions, and decent safety considerations. And then shortly after, the derailment and massive chemical fire in East Palestine, Ohio, Poisoning communities, air and water in a massive and expanding area exemplifies like nothing else the inevitable consequences of decades of the duopoly putting profits over people and planet. We've seen so many examples like this, but this is just the latest and most heartbreaking. And meanwhile, the Republicans are more than ever the party of no. No progress, no compromise, no ideas, no human rights, no care for the planet. No compassion, no justice, no peace, no heart, no hope, no future. The party of no. Against this backdrop, the Green Party has survived another round of all-out attacks on our right to participate in democracy here in Wisconsin and all across the country, along with the false hopes of endless, well-meaning Democratic Party reformers, progressive Democrats, socialist Democrats, and even Democrats in denial, who in the end always co-opt themselves into the corporate establishment instead of helping build independent people power to fight the establishment. We, the Green Party, have survived, but we have to be honest and self-critical. The Green Party is not yet where we want and need it to be. To grow into a dynamic force that can break through the stagnation of politics as usual, we need to cultivate the Green Party as a community-grounded, organizing focused independent party of the left that truly respects the intersectionality and interconnectedness of our four pillars, grassroots democracy, social justice, nonviolence, and ecological wisdom. Water is life. Community grounded means we need to talk with our neighbors, organize in our communities and ground our actions and strategy in advocating for the real needs of real people. Organizing focused means we need to spend less time talking to and arguing with the usual suspects in siloed echo chambers and more time reaching out to like minded people and organizations to not only mobilize for events and campaigns, but to build sustainable and growth oriented organization to realize our commitment to true grassroots democracy. Independent means we must defend and articulate our commitment to true independence from corporate capitalists and the political parties they control 
the Democratic, Republican, and Libertarian parties, as well as countless groups and the satellite of the big money corporate establishment. It means we need to grow the dues paying membership base of the Green Party, because drawing from fundamental cooperative principles, we all need to have skin in the game and no one is going to fund our revolution but ourselves. Being a party of the left means that we recognize and embrace the fact that the Green Party of the United States is committed to evolving beyond the system of capitalism that is exploiting our people and planet to the breaking point and fueling endless war for limited resources due to capitalism's imperative to grow endlessly or die. We're committed to democratic and ecological socialism that puts people, planet, and peace over profit. Our values and program are wildly popular Unlike the corporate political establishment, the right-wing Republican Party and its chief enabler, the center-right Democratic Party. We need to organize around popular issues and engage in internal education about our eco-socialist program. We must resist the urge to pander to capitalists and right-wingers to try to expand our appeal, which would destroy the very essence of what sets the Green Party apart and drive away the very people who agree with our values and platform. Let's talk about the intersectionality and interconnectedness of our four pillars of grassroots democracy, social justice, nonviolence, and ecological wisdom. The concept of intersectionality describes the ways in which systems of inequality based on gender, race, ethnicity, sexual orientation, gender identity, disability, class, and other forms of discrimination intersect to create unique dynamics and effects. Interconnectedness means that you can't take out any one of the four pillars or the whole thing collapses. If the planet dies, there can be no peace, justice, or democracy. If we don't have peace, war could destroy the planet. Does anyone believe we can achieve a peaceful, sustainable planet without justice or democracy, aside from a matrix-like dystopia? Of course not. There are today some very loud voices, some with good intentions, some not with good intentions, who say that Greens should work with far-right forces and other whose views, goals, and actions contradict our clearly stated values, platform, goals, and vision of a peaceful, green, democratic world of justice and human rights for all. This urge comes from desperation at a perceived lack of mass movements, and reacting to that despair with the idea that we have to accept everyone into our coalition who claims to share common cause on some issue, no matter how repellent their other views, goals, and actions. Of course, we must appeal to those who don't agree with us on everything. For example, union members who vote Republican, comfortable liberals who vote Democrat, many, many people who've given up on voting, and others. That's very, very different from building alliances with repellent people and organizations, and giving legitimacy, credibility, popularity, and even material resources to people and organizations who barely hide their intentions to destroy the Green Party and everything we stand for, as well as to exploit and oppress our planet and people, especially already marginalized groups. As a party that has always struggled to attract members from marginalized and oppressed groups, we must heed the warnings of Ajama Baraka and many others that if we put more effort into making the movement comfortable for bigots than for marginalized people, they will leave such a movement oppose it, and it will fail. While some may thinking, think working with the far right and other repellent actors could be a shortcut to building a mass movement, evidence and history suggests that there could hardly be a better way to discredit and destroy a leftist people's movement like the Green Party. We can start with Germany in the early 20th century where the far right latched onto the rising popularity of socialism with promises of economic benefits for the people. They called this national socialism and many leftists joined this new left-right alliance. The left-right alliance briefly worked well for the far right. The rest is history. I don't wanna dwell on an uncomfortable subject. I just feel this needs to be said because the internet has a tendency to amplify some of the loudest voices, even when there's ideas are not based in history or the experience of successful movement builders like Martin Luther King Jr. or Eugene Debs. In fact, the loudest voices on the internet are the right wing and capitalists who control and benefit from the systems of oppression. And there are many, many tentacles. So to sum up, the best way to discredit and destroy the Green Party and all the movements we care about is to form ill-considered alliances with the far right and other actors whose views, goals, and actions are repellent to our values and the values of most people. So 
let's build the Green Party as a community grounded, organizing focused, independent party of the left that truly respects the intersectionality and interconnectedness of our four pillars, grassroots democracy, social justice, nonviolence, and ecological wisdom. Thank you very much for being here. And I'll pass it over to Sam um, for uh, his co-chair uh, statement. And I will be right back because I need a quick bio break. Thanks, Dave. Um, yeah, that's a, that's a tough uh, act to follow. Um, over the uh, over the past you know week, I've been trying to organize my thoughts for this speech. Um, it's been difficult because uh, there's a lot of things going on in the world and a lot of issues which are naturally um, pulling uh, one's attention. But the reality is that that's because we're living in a moment of history. Uh, the current moment um, makes large demands on us as a party of the left and a party of, of the people. And it's, it's, a, it's vital that we're able to, to rise to meet those demands. So one concept which was um, rattling around in my mind over this past week is the concept of justice, environmental justice, social justice, economic justice, and global justice across borders as frequently um, becomes overlooked um, as we seek to rectify the issues within our own um, national society uh, closed in by borders. Um, but all of these issues are interconnected as, as Dave um, expounded upon um, rather than I likely could. And the common root cause um, threatening justice in the world is is the world system that we're living under, the capitalist neoliberal world system, which seeks to commodify the planet, the people living upon it, exploit them, use them, and when done with them, um, treat them as, as waste to be disposed of. So what's the solution? The solution is eco-socialism and it's people power. It's our ability to come together as the workers or the people um, to, act, to, to, to change the planet because we are uh, what creates the world that we have. We are um, playing out, um, you know, the demands of a very small group of people um, pursuing profits, pursuing their personal power, um, at the expense of our health, at the expense of the survival of our planet, at the cost of our ability to survive. Right now, um, I think many folks are concerned about the war which is going on um, across the world. Uh, when we sought input from our membership, many of our Greens expressed concerns about nuclear war, about the growth of the already gigantic military industrial complex, which could be expanded upon for a much longer, uh, complicated um, acronym, bringing in Congress, bringing in academia, bringing in our um, 
capitalist media, all of which come together to sell us war, wars which set us as workers against each other in the name of defending um, essentially uh, the 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 ownership of uh, of people that their ability to 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 set us against each other and set us against the planet so i think it's very vital that we're able to come together in these times see the forces which are um creating the inequalities, creating the environmental destruction, confront those things. And if we're not able to do so now, it, it, it's hard to say how much longer we, we have to get this right. Um, we have exceeded many of the planetary boundaries uh, and it's it's imperative that that we're able to come together, and um, that's what we're trying to do here with with our with the Green Party. Um, so with that, I will pass. Not sure if um, Dave is back. Yet. Yes, I am. Excellent. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank you, Sam. Um, all right. Yeah. And there, um, you know, as, as I mentioned in the chat, so these co chair statements, uh, we usually um, put them at the beginning just to get folks thinking about the current political situation. And we will have open discussion uh, in just a little bit later. But next on the agenda, um, we have our uh, reports from committees and local chapters, and so we will um, we will pass it around to our uh, committee co-chairs, um, or you know if there are other uh, committee members who um, you know have been tasked with uh, giving the uh, committee reports, and um, we'll also hear short reports from our. Uh, chapters in Greater Milwaukee and uh, Dane County. Um, yeah, so why don't we um, go alphabetically? And um, I think that means that we start with the communications committee. Um, yep, yeah, that is correct. Okay, yeah, so um, the communications committee. I also happen to be um, a chair of communications committee. So I just want to let people know that um, you know we have been meeting regularly um, every month. Uh, we can certainly use more members. We especially are interested in members um, with writing skills, people who uh, are well versed in the Green Party platform, people who follow current events, uh, state, local, and national politics, um, and you know people who uh, you know have skills with marketing uh, and or social media, um, website, etc. Um, and some of the things that we're working on are um, you know working on social media uh, policies and um, you know ways to regularly and effectively get our message out um, we're working on our you know improving our digital presence our website and social media um, as well as other things in order to um, yeah you know keep our members posted uh, you know let people know about events let people know about uh, issue statements and um, yeah and you know we're trying to 
get better at uh, giving plenty of advance notice for events, whether there are meetings or things like uh, rallies, like the, uh, the peace rally that we've endorsed for March. Um, and yeah, as I said, we can definitely use more help with this and more energy because the people on the committee are great, but um, you know, tend to be spread thin. I, I don't think there's any of us who isn't on at least two other committees, so um, probably more. So yeah, uh, like all of our committees, we would, we would love to have more members apply to join. And it's a, it's a simple process. As long as you're a dues paying member in good standing of the Wisconsin Green Party, you can just apply to join a, a committee on our committees page. Let us know what committee you're interested in why you think you're a good fit for it. And then the coordinating council just, um, you know, can, can vote to approve people on the committees. Um, and there's a question about meeting minutes. And yeah, so meeting minutes are kept in our Google Drive folders. And um, yeah, so anyone who you know, is a member of our committees and has access to those should be able to access them. But I don't think I'll be able to facilitate the meeting and give links to all our meeting minutes and stuff like that. So I hope that answers the question from Tom. Um, so, yeah. And our uh, Barbara is taking minutes right now. So thank you for that. Um, all right, so I will pass it over uh, to the next alphabetically. Um, so let's hear from the Elections Committee. And uh, Barbara, would you like to report out from that? I'm mute. I don't know what, what screen oh, to look at. Oh, here's the... Where am I looking? Sure. I'll just... Here? I'll just yeah. <laughs> oh, um... Yeah, you can, you can. Am I use, looking here? Hi, this. everyone. I'm the elections chair for a couple more months. Um, I have decided that I will continue on until through the April election this year, and then we have to find some new blood to lead. So I'm help, happy to help out. Um, but we have, you know, our, our smaller elections this year uh, for local elections, and then um, I mean, obviously, election season is never over in the United States but it is quite a while until the next uh, election. So what's happening right now in the committee? We have been looking over the Cheryl McFarland results from last year, little by little, to see all of these um, awesome little pockets around Wisconsin where we have um, supporters, whether or not we were able to go on the ground there and get out the vote. Um, we had about 50,000 people from around Wisconsin vote whether or not we told them to. So they're looking out for us. And there are some pockets that have more than the average percent, which was uh, about one and a half percent in Wisconsin. We only needed one percent to get our ballot status back. So uh, that is a huge win for us that we got our ballot status back. And um, we're looking for our little pockets of uh, people around Wisconsin to help us make walking sheets for the future, um, figure out where exactly we should be um, sending people to call, to text, um, to do a lot more outreach. So that's something that is kind of a long-term project because we only get a little bit done at a time, but it's definitely something worthwhile. And it's, it's always really um, encouraging when we have these meetings to do this work because we get to see all of these great little pockets of greens around Wisconsin. Um, the other thing that we have been doing, um, and I'll, I'll rely on the Four Lakes Green Party to tell us about their endorsements, but the Greater Milwaukee Green Party endorsed Missy Zambor for uh, Milwaukee Public School Board, the um, citywide seat. She is a green BSA candidate, and we're really excited about her. She's got um, a lot of great policies that she's backing, including um, really focusing on the nutrition in the schools, which um, we actually had walkouts a couple of years ago um, at Obama High School about the poor, the poor, poor quality of nutrition in the school. So um, we're really excited to have a lot of local candidates um, 
Madison has some more to tell us about. And I think I'll leave it at that. We always have our meetings on the first Tuesday of the month at seven o'clock. So if you'd like to join the committee, um, you can definitely reach out to me. I can put my information in the chat. And uh, we always need more new people to, to help us out. Um, I don't know if I should talk about it later. I probably should talk about that now too. We also um, do Conservation Congress work. We are the only state in the union that has a lobby, a public lobby called the Conservation Congress. And you think by the name that it's really a bunch of conservationists, but it, it really isn't. It, they, it feels more like a hunting and fishing club. So the more greens that we can put in the lobby, uh, the better our chances that we can actually push uh, green policy and green environmental policy. So what's happening now is that from uh, today until, well, early, earlier than today, but until March 1st, people are able to write uh, advisory questions. And these questions will go on um, a countywide ballot for the spring hearing. And the spring hearing, uh, a whole your county will be able to vote on those proposals to see if that is something that, and these can end up um, going statewide and getting a lot more interest from not only the Conservation Congress, but also the state legislature as well. Um, it's definitely a huge uphill battle, but it's worthwhile. We have um, put in, things like the Green New Deal in the past, and um, a whole bunch of uh, uh, advisory questions to protect animals and things like that. So there's, uh, uh, there's one avenue that we can go through. Another way is if you're interested in running or you know anybody interested in running, this is the first time in three years that they're going to have elections. And those elections will be um, probably all of them are close to all April 3rd. Um, April 3rd through the 5th is their kind of window that they're going to have these countywide hearings that they're calling open houses this year. As they're partially online when people can go vote for all of these things, um, all of the advisory questions online. And then in person, you'll be able to vote for um, the candidates who will serve on the Conservation Congress. So if you're interested in either one, um, I've been serving for a little while. Um, I can definitely give some tips. Um, I can definitely help with advisory questions as well. And um, I, I'll, I also compose an email about all this stuff. So I'll send that out probably later today or tomorrow to just kind of remind everybody of all those details because it is a little bit complicated. Um, but it's definitely something that we want to continue to pursue um, because we could just flood the, the Conservation Congress with greens, and um, that would be definitely a great thing for Wisconsin. And with that, I will pass, unless there's any questions. Thank you. All right, so next up, let's hear from the Finance Committee, a.k.a. Bill. Okay, uh, Melissa. Oh boy, are you speedy here? Um, she screen shared my report. So um, our state um, party finances are in reasonably good shape, with nearly fourteen thousand dollars in the bank. But it should be noted that as recently as a year ago, we had over over nineteen thousand in the bank. So there are. Two reasons I think can be identified for the drop in our um, assets. First of all is a decline in income. During 2020, which of course was a presidential election year, we were taking in close to $500 a month in dues. We are currently averaging only about $300. So we've seen these ebbs and flows in um, membership and in dues payment uh, in the past, and we're experiencing it right now. But a second reason for the decline in our uh, bank balance is we've taken advantage of political opportunities to build the party in the last year, uh, in particular with our election campaigns. 
We spent over $3,000 last year petitioning to win back our state ballot status. And we've spent another $2,000 on uh, the campaigns of seven select um, Green Party uh, campaigns in the state. Our routine operating expenses for the Wisconsin Greens, that is bookkeeping, uh, post office box, Zoom, our database server, filing fees, uh, all of those uh, routine operating expenses run us about $250 a month. So currently our dues collection is uh, barely covering our operating expenses. We've had discussions uh, on the coordinating council about how to rein in our expenses, in particular, the cost of our membership data server, Nation Builder, but also uh, bookkeeping expenses. And we will need to move on this. Concerning income, all of our income comes from our members through dues and donations. Uh, especially important is the number of members who pay online monthly. This is really the lifeblood of our, of our organization. So we encourage all of you to keep current on your dues. If you're not a member, please consider joining. Um, the dues uh, really makes a difference. It's the best way to keep us solvent and prepared to meet opportunities for growth for the organization. Uh, I'll take any questions, but um, that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Bill. Great. Yeah. Um, so um, let's see. Okay, yeah, if, if you want to get on stack, please do put it in the chat. Okay, so I see uh, Bruce in the stack. Uh, I assume this is a question about the finances. Go ahead, Bruce. Go ahead. Um, no figures on the actual membership. What is our current membership? And how does it uh, compare, let's say, to the last four or five years? Is it hovering around a certain number? Is it going up, going down, just where is our membership? Um, I wish I could uh, give exact numbers on that. I think Sam might have exact numbers, but I can say generally that our membership over the last few years has fluctuated between, I think a low of maybe 60 or 70 members in the state. And we've at points uh, been over uh, 120. I think we're probably on the lower end of that uh, spectrum right now, which is not surprising in um, in uh, in between presidential elections, where uh, I remember uh, in 2000, we had one month where we took in $2,000 of dues. We had about, I don't know, 50, 60, 80 people that paid dues in one month. So we have these uh, ebbs and flows. Um, I don't know, Sam, do you have any numbers? Pass? Yeah. Um, so as of this moment, we have 61 dues paying members. Um, as far as how that trends, um, we have been on an upward trajectory with uh, membership. Um, if I recall, um, at the at, at around the fall gathering, we were looking at um, I think fifty four members. So um, not necessarily the gains um, that we're hoping for, but it's a good start. Um, and uh, one of the initiatives which we're focusing on for this year is growing the membership. Um, so more to come on that um, and strategies to get more people um, involved and active in the party. Yes. Okay, thanks. All, All right. right, so um, next yeah, uh, problem. Finances. Um, yeah, we're, we're well behind schedule. And so th that was the finance committee report. We haven't gotten to the membership committee report yet. So thanks to Bill for answering that question, but 
we're trying to stay on the agenda here. So this is about finances. I'll take that as a no. Okay, thanks. Um, if you, yeah, so we still have to hear reports from IT, membership outreach, and platform policy. So those are coming right up. Um, okay, so IT committee is next. So I'll pass it over to co-chair Sam and Melissa. Thanks. Thanks, Dave. Um, I've got a screen share, so I'm just gonna do that. I have a PowerPoint. Can any, everyone see my screen? Yes. Yes. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, so I'll try to move through this quickly. Um, I just was going to provide uh, some news and updates over the past year so, and some basics as to how our members can help uh, promoting green ideas and Green Party policy and education through social media and other ways to get involved. So in 2022, we uh, accomplished a number of goals in IT. We, the primary project was uh, updating our website. So wisconsingreenparty.org has had a new fresh look uh, for this year. Um, we also designed uh, a new logo. Uh, there were three design drafts that were created and then we sent out a membership uh, survey, a survey to our membership. And so our membership uh, gave input and uh, helped choose our new logo. So uh, we we're very appreciative for the involvement on that. Um, internally, uh, in terms of like IT administrative business, um, we recently on the committee drafted and approved a new policies and procedures document for our committee. It serves as a welcoming document that can orientate new members to the committee. And it also serves as a basic best practice guide for new and existing committee members. Um, another thing that we did is that we implemented Google Analytics in July um, to help us kind of gauge and track how many people are visiting our website and what topics people are interested in on our website. So I thought I'd share some of that information um, from July to through December of last year. So uh, Google Analytics does not track data retroactively. So I only have the data from July till the end of the year uh, from the point where we implemented it. Of course, next year we'll have a full year of data. But from this, we can see that our website is tra traffic is really good. We have uh, almost 7,000 users visiting our site. And of those, um, 6,700 of them are new users. So it means that those are people who are navigating to our site for the first time. Um, our average engagement time, that's the time people spend on our website. Uh, it, right now it's at a minute and eight seconds. It could be a little higher. So that might be a goal for IT to uh, try to work with other committees with to see if we can boost that uh, engagement time next year. How are our users finding us? Uh, a vast majority of them are finding us through an organic search. And that means that they're typing uh, something Green Party related into a search engine and Wisconsin Green Party's website is coming up. Uh, and then they're clicking on that search result from there. Um, another large chunk are referrals. So the user was referred by another site. So they saw a web link on a social media post somewhere or uh, some other website that directed them to our site. Another large percentage, about 1,175 uh, in our users were navigating directly to our site. That meant they opened up a search bar, they typed in wisconsingreenparty.org and they came directly to our site. Uh, finally, rounding out these numbers, we have um, 78 people who were ref referred through social media posts and one user was re referred through a video post. This is a breakdown of the top 10 pages people are looking for when they come to our site. At the top page, uh, perhaps unsurprisingly, is our homepage. We can see from the subsequent pages, there was a lot of interest in Cheryl's campaign, uh, Cheryl McFarland, our Secretary of State candidate last year. So many of the top pages were people uh, learning about her. Um, and then we also see 
our platform page was number three. So people learning about our platform um, and then uh, the contribution page uh, is number seven. That's always good to see um, information about our fall gathering and then rounding out those 10 pages were our four pillars and our 10 key values. So uh, we can see a demonstration of what is interesting people um, when they come to our site and what they are looking at. So there are ways you can help us uh, spread the word about the Wisconsin Green Party. Of course, you can share our website directly with people. That's wisconsingreenparty.org. We also have Facebook and Twitter. I've included those addresses here. So anybody who's using social media, uh, you can follow us You can um, on those channels and you can keep in touch with us that way. Um, another way that you can help in, in that arena is engaging with our social media posts. Every like, every comment, every share, those boost the algorithms to uh, draw attention to our site. And those are very helpful. Um, and of course, you can also share our blog posts or website content on your own social media channels. And that helps us immensely as well. Another way that you can uh, be active as a green is to engage with our, your local representatives in your area. So this website is uh, an independent website, but it's very helpful to find who your elected officials are, myvote.wisconsin.gov. And from there you can uh, look and enter your address and it will tell you all of your elected officials in your area and it helps you get in contact with them. The final way that you can help, or I guess not the final way, there's lots of ways, but the final way I'm talking about today is that you can help volunteer for our committees. Um, we have several committees, as I believe it was Dave mentioned, lots of our committee members are uh, active on several committees right now. So we're always, looking for new people who express interest, you can apply to be on one of our committees. And um, so if you want more information about our committees and what each committee does, you can go to wisconsingreenparty.org backslash committees to see a list of those and a description of the kind of work each committee does. And I'm happy to take any questions right now that are related to, to IT, but um, if nobody has any questions now uh, and you have some in the future, you can feel free to contact either Sam or I, we're the IT committee co-chairs, and uh, you can reach us at wigptools at gmail.com. Or if you just have a general question uh, for the party leadership, you can fill out the form Form at wisconsingreenparty.org backslash contact us and submit a question that way and someone will get in touch with you. And with that, I'll open the floor if anybody has any questions. So I, there's a question if you can put links directly in the chat and uh, I would think, you know, after this report, um, you would probably be able to do that. Absolutely, I can do that as soon as I'm done talking. <laughs> thank you. Great, thank you. You're welcome. Are there any other questions for our IT co-chairs? All right, not seeing any. And yeah, um, great. So let's keep moving. And I, I do wanna recognize that we are um, a little bit behind schedule not a problem but it is 110 so i just wanted to get a quick sense of the room um, if people would like to take a five minute break now and then resume with the last two committee reports and two local chapter reports before we start a discussion or the other option would be to finish up with reports um, which might take another 10 or 15 minutes and then take a break. Uh, so if you have a preference, please put it in the chat now. And uh, yeah, please put it in the chat now. Let's see, two, three votes to finish reports, one for break. 
going once, going twice. Okay. So uh, let's let's keep going with the reports. All right. So next up is the membership committee, um, and so we recently have had. Okay, so we have two votes for break, um, but three for finished reports. Okay, so going once, going twice, three for break. Okay, well, now that's a tie, I think I will probably have to defer to our written schedule and say, let's take a break. Um, so let's let us take a short break here. Um, it's now 1.12 p.m. So let's take a five minute break and reconvene at 1.17 p.m. 1.17 p.m. to continue our committee reports. Okay, five minute break. See you all soon.
Okay. So we've had our break of five minutes or so. Um, so folks can reconvene. And as mentioned, we still have two committee reports left and then two local chapter reports. And then we can get right into the discussion portion. Um, all right. So next up is our membership outreach committee report. Um, and we have a, a number of members of the membership outreach committee here, including Barbara, myself, James, Sam, Melissa, and Bill. Um, we haven't decided on a uh, chair or co-chair just yet. Um, so I'll go ahead and give a quick report of what we've been working on, um, aside from working on uh, details for this winter gathering, uh, which as I mentioned is our first gathering, our first winter gathering. Um, but so a subcommittee uh, worked on and sent out a survey to our uh, membership. Um, and we want to work on continued ways to do outreach and, uh, you know, get information on our membership and their priorities, um, as well as their availability to help. Um, we um, are planning on membership drive and ongoing membership recruitment. Um, working on more of a specific onboarding process for new members, um, you know, and information for new members about the Green Party and how to get involved. Um, and um, working on a process for liaisons or anchor people uh, who are interested in organizing in districts that currently don't have locals how we can help those folks to organize and make connections in their areas, um, whether that means their local community or something like a congressional district. Um, and yeah, just support for organizing locals, uh, caucuses and campus organizations. Um, and some of our other priorities as well <coughs> are to work on um, political education, our theory of change, uh, electoral reforms that we support like ranked choice voting and proportional representation, um, and some of the you know, particular difficulties in organizing independent politics in the United States, such as the, the spoiler myth that says, you know, if, if you don't vote for one of the uh, two corporate parties, then um, you know, you're to blame for everything bad that happens because of those two corporate parties. Um, yeah, so uh, obviously that's a lot. And fortunately, we've had some new signups recently to the membership outreach committee, but, uh, you know, we can always use more help. So if folks are interested in doing the membership outreach work, then please let us know. Um, all right, so, and... If there are any questions regarding membership outreach, then uh, please get on stack and we'll keep moving and go to our uh, platform and policy committee. Sam, you ready? Oh yeah, sorry, I thought we were waiting on um questions for membership since a few no, no, I think we want to keep moving if there are any questions we can always go back but yeah let's try to keep keep moving forward sounds good all right um so i'll start off the uh, policy and platform uh, committee report and then i'll hand it off to my fellow co-chair joe nathan uh so policy and platform committee um at this point we're filling two main functions, developing policy statements, commenting on issues of the day legislatively and also just of, com of general interest, and then um, discussing and developing platform amendments to expand our party platform. Uh, so over the past three months, um, we've touched on a number of topics. A few of those are the ongoing situation with 
railroad workers um, and the railroads in general, student loan debt forgiveness, PFAS in Wisconsin, and just in general, um, the impact of forever chemicals on our environment, um, state of the state uh, address that cut, that came out this year, um, the, biennial, the biennial budget um, will have some materials um, probably coming out related to that in the future. Um, at our most recent meeting, um, we discussed a bill which is going through, uh, which is um, currently in the state legislature, which is, which um, related to book bans, um, as well as some environmental legislation, which uh, was focused on um, water quality. Um, prior uh, to the fall gathering, or rather at the fall gathering, we had voted on a slate of platform amendments. Um, and you can expect more of that coming in the spring um, so that we can expand our party platform and um, have it uh, addressing some of the current issues. Uh, so with that, I'm going to hand it off to Joe Nathan um, to discuss uh, whatever he um, would like, um, as well as the lack do flambeau statement which we recently put out so go ahead joe nathan hello can you hear me yes okay um well the platform and policy committee has some of the most um broad subject discussions and uh you know it's a, a good place for that and uh it, it it's definitely a challenge in this moment of history to um in the context of, uh, you know, uh, climate change, human caused uh, catastrophe, and uh, being at the brink of nuclear annihilation, you know, that's really um, within the context of that, we have all kinds of discussions uh, about positive, uh, you know, <laughs> futures. And uh, well, anyway, I mean, state of the world, just real quick, um, I, I understand that um, about we still have a lot of biodiversity we have a lot of species but the numbers are re greatly reduced so i don't know maybe biomass and number of individuals is down near like you know 50 percent of nature is gone and so there's a big treaty uh lots of nations not the united states of america though um lots of nations hundreds of nations trying to say well you know, by 2030, we'll save 30% of nature, and maybe we can sustain ourselves off of that. That's, you know, hopeful. Uh, still, I mean, it's just like we have these big discussions. So um, uh, we, we approve this statement. I just wanted to say a quick word uh, about terminology. I mean, there's um, the, the use of Native American Indian, American uh, Indian, uh, comes from and is a little different than the term federal Indian. Uh, the United States War Department established federal Indian law and codified that sort of racial terminology into what is the, the living context of modern uh, Native American Indian, uh, federal Indian litigation law. So anyway, th those terms are, are built into the institutional racism of the United States, and, and we, we contend with that every day. So here's the, the, the official um, sanctioned statement uh, regarding uh, Lac du Flambeau, which is a French name. Uh, Waswagening is Ojibwe, and there's old Waswagening and new Waswagening. Uh, the Wisconsin Green Party stands in support of tribal sovereignty and treaty rights of the Lac du Flambeau Federal Native American Indian Reservation Nation and their legal control over their own federal tribal lands. Nation to nation relations are the first and foremost guiding principle and most basic fact of legal social relationships in the present road closure dispute. The federal Indians and the federal government of the United States of America stand on equal terms to negotiate their decisions. The state of Wisconsin and all local authorities benefit every day from land that was negotiated in good faith and trust between the original people of this land who are still primary caretakers of the health of this land resulting in federal Indian law as it exists today. 
the land acknowledgement, that land acknowledgement is the trust responsibility, not only of people employed as the federal government, it is also a responsibility of all law-abiding U.S. citizens. After 200 years of immoral land theft, religious bigotry, and racist ignorant treatment, the people of Lac de Flambeau have every right to decide the governance of their own federal Indian lands. And uh, just as a, a quick context uh, background, um, when I graduated high school um, some years ago, some decades ago, uh, 1994, um, the Thornapple group became a federal tribal group, uh, Little River Reservation in Manistee. And it wasn't very long before the federal agents had to be called in to move the Manistee County Sheriff's personal property line back to where it should be because he was trying to take tribal land. So it's always been this way and it continues to this day. And so, um, right, we are, part of the importance here is most of the land that remains, most of the nature is in tribally controlled hands. And there has been a lot of land transfer back to tribally controlled uh, authority and the land does very well. So um, most of what's left of nature supporting everybody is tribal land. And that's very important for everybody's health. Thank you, pass. Thank you very much, Nathan. Um, and Sam, yeah, thank you. Okay, great. So that concludes our committee reports. Uh, next up, we have our local chapter reports. And at this point, we are um, starting to fall significantly behind our uh, schedule. So let's try to keep things um, brief as possible. Uh, I'm sure that folks are excited to get to the discussion portion. So um, let's hand it over to the Greater Milwaukee Green Party uh, for our first chapter report. And do we have uh, party co-chairs present? That would be me. <laughs> Please take it away. Uh, hey folks, I'm gonna make this real brief. Uh, we have, uh, uh, Greater Milwaukee has been involved in basically uh, <clears throat> four different campaigns. Uh, and organizations uh, in the in, in recent years, uh, we are active in the Milwaukee Power to the People campaign, which is an initiative uh, led by DSA and and us uh, around uh, creating a new municipal municipal electric uh, uh, electric utility, uh, taking over from uh, We Energies. Uh, we're having a, a, uh, a rally. We've been collecting signatures for a petition to uh, uh, begin to begin the process to uh, uh, begin that process. Uh, there's going to be a rally where we're going to deliver uh, 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 well over a thousand signatures, probably more by April 21st, which is we will present those. Uh, at City Hall to the mayor, uh, it's going to be a. Uh, we will have a have a march from uh, uh, from We Energies to uh, uh, to City Hall. Uh, it's going to be very. I, I'm pretty pumped about it. Uh, we continue to work with the uh, committee to to normalize relations with Cuba on uh, a, a regular monthly car caravan, uh, at least in the decent winter, wet weather months uh, to uh, uh, end the blockade to, uh, of Cuba. We've been involved in uh, the uh, committee uh, against the wars, uh, plural, <laughs> uh, uh, organized by uh, Peace Action of Wisconsin. We've had people involved in that. Uh, and lastly, we've been involved in the uh, 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 Julian Assange uh, Freedom Campaign. Uh, good stuff, we're trying to build the party. We need, uh, we need more people to do it. 
Thank you. That's my report. Um, Mike, did you mention uh, the electoral campaign that you're working on? Or oh, yes. Uh, yes. Well, uh, Barb touched on both of them. This is on board as the uh, DSA candidate for uh, uh, for uh, Milwaukee School Board. Uh, we've been uh, uh, involved in that, and there's another. She's having a fun, fundraiser for her birthday tomorrow, and I'm going to try to stop by. Uh, and let's see. Uh, and all of the uh, material of the uh, 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 lost my train of thought. Uh, all of the uh, Conservation Congress stuff that Barbara also discussed earlier. Great, thank you. I see Bruce is on stack. Go ahead, Bruce. Uh, what's the current membership of Milwaukee's chapter? Just curious. Huh, I don't have a number either. Uh, I believe, well, it's, it's probably about a dozen. We wish it were more. We may be able, um, some of our IT wizards actually may be able to uh, pull that number um, in a few minutes. I'm, I'm not sure, but uh, could, you know, put that out there in case, but yeah. Um, yeah, we, we definitely have, we definitely have more state members than local members. We have a, we have a, a local due structure as well. Uh, uh, and, and yeah, I'm thinking it's about a dozen and there may be more state members who are not yet local members. Yeah, thanks, Mike. Yeah, I think, you know, it's a common story throughout the Green Party. Um, and pretty much all righteous organizations throughout the country that um, we certainly could use more people and we wish we had more people and we have, um, you know, a group of people who are doing a lot and have been doing a lot for a long time. And um, yeah, and so, um, but that really, I think, makes a the point about intersectionality so beautifully because you're talking about issues that are all about the environment, social justice, imperialism, and you know, grassroots democracy, working on issue campaigns, electoral campaigns. So thank you, Mike. Uh, keep up the good work. And people know everyone in the greater Milwaukee area, please join up and get active. So uh, Four Lakes Green Party is next, our Dane County chapter. Um, so I will toss it over to Sam and Melissa, our Four Lakes Green Party co-chairs. Thanks, Dave. I'll uh, start off. So the Four Lakes Green Party, um, one of the main, some of the main issues that we've tackled recently is, uh, are the uh, water quality issues such as PFAS contamination, uh, we continue to protest the uh, installation of the F-35 uh, fighter jets at Truex Field, which will adversely affect um, a significant portion of our community. Um, affordable housing is another issue that we, uh, it, it's, it's a prominent issue within the city of Madison. Uh, it's also one that we've been discussing in our local chapter as uh, access to safe and affordable housing is not just a human right, but it's also a matter of social justice, uh, racial justice and economic justice. Um, and we also have endorsed a very exciting slate of candidates. We have six candidates for the Madison uh, Common Council who we have endorsed. We sent out an endorsement survey to all of the candidates uh, running in the districts and um, we got several exciting responses and we were happy to uh, endorse six really uh, fantastic, exciting candidates in the upcoming election. Um, with that, I will see if, if uh, my co-chair Sam has anything to add or Dave, if you have anything to add as secretary. Sure, I'll hop on um, just to preempt the question that 
might be coming based on uh, some of the questions we've gone before. Uh, so we, um, we pulled the membership list when we had done uh, the Four Lakes um, endorsements. Um, so at that time we had 22 members. Since then, um, we have gained a few members. Um, I don't have the exact number on hand right now, but I would estimate it's around 25, um, which uh, I suppose would mean that um, it's just a little bit under uh, half of the state party pass. Yeah, thanks, Sam. Um, yeah, and you know, I also want to state that, um, you know, just that we're, we're very excited about the city council candidates that we've endorsed. Um, you know, Madison, there is a lot going on in Madison these days, and it's not easy to keep up. Um, the city is really changing very quickly. And thanks to, you know, our record for two decades of you know, the Green Party uh, running candidates, getting candidates elected in Madison, um, you know, really being part of the conversation, being at the table, um, you know, and showing up. We have made a difference. The, you know, um, a lot of the developments in Madison um, have been, you know, some of the most sustainable and affordable and people centered in the country. Um, but we do have problems uh, right now, I'd say a problem that is becoming huge in Madison and around the country is affordable housing. Um, and everyone is talking about it and the plenty of new housing is being built, but uh, affordable housing is disappearing. Um, so I just want to throw that out there as a major issue that, uh, of course, the Democrats and Republicans are not doing anything about, um, you know, because they work for the capitalists. Uh, during the Great Recession, uh, you know, they did nothing when the, the banks and the, uh, you know, the real estate companies threw 5 million people out of their homes during the foreclosure crisis in the Obama years. So, um, but anyway, uh, I digress. So that's uh, for the extreme party that brings us to the end of reports. And I think that's a good segue right into our discussion segment. Um, so I'll just reread the prompts from before. Um, so now it's time for a discussion. What would you like the Green Party to work on? And, um, you know, I would especially love to hear from uh, new members and um, yeah, and, and people who uh, haven't been involved before. Uh, so we recently sent a survey to our members asking what issues matter to them and what they'd like the Green Party to work on. In this discussion, we hope to hear more from Wisconsin Green Party members, aka you, about the issues that are important to you and how we can organize as Greens to make a real difference and build an effective movement. Um, so again, some issues that have come up in the survey include climate change, clean water, affordable housing, education and daycare, nonviolence in our communities, anti-war, anti-imperialism, racial justice, man-made environmental disasters like the recent derailment and chemical fire in East Palestine, Ohio. This is your party. What would you like the Green Party to work on? And then since we're already a little close to two, I'll just read the kind of part two prompts. Um, as we continue the discussion, we'd like to connect the dots from issues we care about to how we as the Green Party can effectively organize to make a difference on these issues and how members can help. We'll also discuss 2023 elections and upcoming 2024 elections and how we can grow the Green Party into the force we need for people, planet, and peace over profit. Um, yeah, so like I said, the time would just fly by. It's now 1.42. So because this is open discussion and we're not really, um, you know, deciding on anything, we're not going to be voting on anything, um, I would propose that maybe we just start the discussion and try to keep going until three. And if folks need to take a break uh, to get some food, uh, take a bio break, just stretch your legs, uh, feel free to do so. Um, 
But yeah, since we, you know, time is flying by, why don't we just jump right into discussion? Um, so again, if you'd like to speak, please go ahead and um, put your name in the stack or um, put the word stack in the chat. <laughs> Okay, Joe Nathan ZB Kingfisher, go ahead. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Um, so I think uh, just my prior suggestion that covers any and all um, suggestions is media and um, I, I I know we're down on the money a little bit, but it, if we invest the uh, a little bit in getting members um, uh, like the media kit, uh, uh, a video, um, uh, you know, and a computer with video editing would do the Green Party, the Wisconsin Green Party, really a ton of credit because one of the things, one of the biggest suggestions that, that sticks with me is we need to be our own media. We need some cameras and some video editing to present who we are and get new fresh blood, younger, uh, innovative. I think that's a really important point and uh, it'll carry any other uh, suggestion out there to the public pass. Thank you. Uh, Lily? Uh, Lily, you are on stack. Can't hear you. Can you unmute? Uh, Lily, it looks like you're still yeah, muted. Okay, great. Go ahead. Yes. Okay. I'm the most on, you know. Okay, what you all said in the beginning, you know how you summarized the first person to talk how you summarized the platform. Um, bottom line, we're all Green Party, except for um, evil corporations, which the politicians are, we know that, they're bought out. Okay, so it's, but there's, that's only what, 2%, 1% of our world is corporations maybe? Okay, maybe more. But, you know, a tiny little thing compared to the general population. Um, and so I'm Jewish. Ah, so it's like a Hitler thing. Like, we are the Green Party. If we are, it, whether we understand it or not, I think it's a prejudice that uh oh you know green party that's you know mumbo jumbo scary people the, the whole world is green party except for that tiny little part of you know with the corporations blah 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 blah, blah people that are bought out and all that stuff you know to me what do you call that just people just, you know crazy people um so it's a matter of just education um and prejudice but again we all are i learned that from my progressive media that I listen to, but we're all Green Party, whether it doesn't matter. You know, you, we could have been named Red Party. We could have been named Blue Party. We're all, we all believe in those principles. So what you said in the beginning, because everybody somehow heard them. And I know it comes down to, to media. I know it comes down to marketing. Um, and not marketing, lying marketing, marketing reality. Um, that's all it comes down to. Um, so once people know that, they'll realize, oh, I'm Green Party too. It's that simple to me. I mean, call me crazy. That's okay. I can call it crazy before. But it's so simple. Everybody, who would not want all your principles? Who would not want those? You know? Again. So yeah, yeah. So it totally comes down to um, how we're going to get the word out. Um, so I'm, that's why I'm here. Fast. 
Great. Yeah, thank you. Very well said. Um, so next, uh, we on Stack, we have Tom, then Bill, then Barbara. Uh, so go ahead, Tom. Um, so yesterday I talked to a person that left the Green Party and, and it was interesting because I got some perspective that I think was helpful. Um, we're, we're an electoral party and, to, you know, to some degree, I'm definitely guilty of not focusing enough on the uh, election side of things, although I'm, you know, I'm on it, certainly do petition drives and so forth. So I, I just think that's what we really need to remember that and we need to be focused on getting candidates um, and I know we all kind of know that but we have to redouble our efforts to keep that a focus and there are these divisive issues um, we are going to have minorities and the other thing is that um, criti critical independent thought uh, involves dialogue and debate and playful discussion. And uh, I think that's very important. Uh, just group think on the left or the right or conservative or libertarian, you, you know, not good. And with respect to um, you know, forming coalitions and so forth, um, we need all the resources available out there uh, and we need to utilize them. There's wonderful, smart people that I disagree with on a number of issues. Anyhow, the main, my main point is that we need to remember that we're an electoral party and we need to grow our membership and uh, run, get people to run for office, uh, pass. Bill. Several members, Barbara in particular, but also Sam and Melissa, I remember, put quite a bit of time into preparing the uh, uh, survey that we sent out to the members. And uh, I know the results are in. Uh, I really haven't um, uh, spent any time looking at them. I wonder if 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 folks who have who've looked at those results uh, see any... Um, any themes or any uh, emphasis that came in in the in the uh, questionnaire responses that would give some indication of what our members are interested in us uh, putting more attention to and focusing on. Pass. Barbara. Then Bruce. Go ahead, Barbara. Yeah, um, I think that what people have been talking about, clean water, housing, really a lot of the basic needs are so incredibly important for us to uh, continue to focus on. I know that those were some of the themes in the survey. Um, and these are things that we can have electoral wins on, um, at least on the small scale, even if we don't have a state house um, you know, if we have a whole bunch of members of Congress or anything like that, we can go to um, people's, uh, you know, local meetings and propose things to the local board. A lot of times the people who come to those meetings every time are the real estate people or, you know, the whoever basically owns and runs the city, but we can be those people too. So, um, that's that's one of my um, you know major things that I'm interested in this year, and um, hopefully we can do more of that with the lead issue in in Milwaukee, um, having some more education and um, action on that, um, on things like food sovereignty. That is something that across the board, you know, everybody is worried about food prices and being able to access food. It's just so incredibly important and being able to be more self-sufficient a little bit. Um, and the other side of the coin is we're deeply, um, we're dealing with like this deep austerity and everybody's like, there's no money for anybody. There's no money for healthcare. There's no money for anything. There's plenty of money. Every <laughs> um, police officer, um, you know, all the police districts, 
they're taking up half or more of the budget um, and up on up the chain. So the state police are taking up a lot of the budget. Um, obviously, the military budget is more than half of the budget. And these huge military um, surveillance efforts are really what's bringing us this this poverty and austerity. And so if we are just dealing with the one side without even thinking about the other, I think that is a huge mistake for us so that we need to focus on that piece um, and focus on those um, important efforts to actually bring people the things that they need. So with that, I'll pass, thanks. Bruce. Okay. Um... Interesting survey, but all 66 part membership. I think we should, and I've been asking for this for some time now, that we need to consider issues that are overall concern people in this country, which includes our state. Our most recent poll from the Pew organization says that uh, strengthening the economy is the number one issue, followed by reducing health care costs, defending against terrorism, reducing influence of money in politics, making Medicare financially sound, that's the top five, reducing the budget deficit, reducing crime, improving education, reducing availability of illegal drugs, and dealing with immigration, that's number 10. I used to be quite a bit higher, actually. It was like number third, three about a year ago. But anyway, um, we need to reach out to people of all sorts. And this gives us kind of an indication of what people really care about. We cannot keep preaching to the same choir. We gotta, we gotta expand our membership. Uh, when we were talking about membership numbers, back in the 90s, we didn't have the internet, we didn't have even conference calls. I, I did the first ever conference call as coach we did. But we maintained a consistent membership as I was treasurer at times back then, around 300 people. And uh, I think a big part of that was the fact we had chapters in St. Croix Valley. Uh, we had two people that got elected to the Superior City Council. They had their own growing group in Superior. We had one in uh, Stevens Point, in Green Bay, in Barakwa, Southwest Wisconsin. <clears throat> we had um, a group in around Oshkosh, Milwaukee. Uh, at that time, it was very hard to maintain a chapter in Madison. They were always coming and going. But um, that's how we had membership of 300 people and their dues. So we need to find a way to appeal to more, more people across the state, <clears throat> not just Madison and Milwaukee. Yes. <clears throat> Okay, um, so next on the stack, looks like we have Sam, AJ, and James. Uh, go ahead, Sam. Thanks. Yeah, so um, I spent a little bit of time with the uh, membership survey results. Uh, and so here are some of the top issues which I spotted on there. And I think that some of these fall into, um, into some common categories. So the top issue that I saw mentioned was criminal justice and police reform, followed up by clean air, water, and soil, um, which was tied with housing and then city municipal issues. After that, we had climate change, rewilding, environmental education, as well as racial justice, LGBTQ plus issues, ballot access, workers' rights, public transport, poverty, price controls. Um, so we have a wide 
a selection of issues which we can organize around and which um, we should be able to uh, find consensus around. Uh, so I'd say um, focus there, uh, broader population polling. Um, I don't know if that's really gonna be our bread and butter. Uh, <laughs> You know, folks are somewhat ambiguous when they um, discuss economic issues, and um, <laughs> there, there's uh, also the question of what is meant and um, what direction are you approaching those from. If we're simply um, reinforcing the existing like capitalist uh, system, which is creating these economic issues. Uh, we're not going to get anywhere. You know, we need to be um, providing a message which is unique. We can't just be piggybacking on the rhetoric of the right wing or conservatives or Democrats or what have you. We need to have um, narratives which appeal to people and are distinct um, from the two major parties. We're going to win by bringing people out uh, who are not your traditional voters um, because they're fed up with this system. I mean, the, the, like, the, the idea that we're going to be shaving off voters from uh, the Republican party is, is a little bit silly to me. Um, we would have to, uh, in effect, compromise um, the core values of our political movement. And in the process of doing that, uh, we, I think probably end up losing a whole lot more and um, torpedoing the organization. Uh, I've heard these ideas before. Um, they're, they have a little bit more um, uh, buoyancy right now um, because they're being pushed, um, you know, within a particular um, alternate media space. Um, but, you know, I don't think that we should be. Um, just jumping on the trendy uh, stuff that's being pushed by a few, um, you know, podcasters and um, Twitter personalities. I think that we uh, should take our cues from um, successful uh, political organizers uh, throughout history. So uh, with that, I'll pass. Thanks, Sam. Um, so on stack, we have AJ, uh, then James, and then I put myself on stack. Uh, go, go ahead, AJ. <laughs> yeah, uh, I, I'll try to make my remarks brief and to say that while, you know, in an organization like ours, you know, it, the aim is to focus on um, electoral action and trying to get folks um, exposed and to serve into um, elected you know, government bodies at the local state and possibly in Congress as well. And it, there's a lot of us here who have been around in the Green Party um, for years. And, and, we, and we've seen a lot of Greens elected in, in this state and around the United States. So we do have a track record. Um, and because our party is an international party, we can say we're the only party in the United States that we have people voted into office from Oakland, California to Auckland, New Zealand. So we have that going for us. Though, while we applaud those things or we should be striving to those things, we also really need to think about how are we organizing? Because the way people recognize us is not just every two to four years getting elected into government, into the state, but what are we doing in our communities? What are we doing in our state? Who are we working with when we're trying to do the things that we want to see real social change, real economic democracy and real environmental justice? And so it's through these actions that will make us more recognizable than just running candidates, which is why, you know, I got elected into um, 
city government, as well as serving on different committees and everything, because people have seen the things like I've done um, in my years of organizing and working with other folks because they recognize that. It's not just I just ran for an office, but they see what AG is doing, and as well as other folks that I know, they see what other people are doing. So they cling on to them and start mobilizing around those folks. So we really need to develop organizing plans. And from those plans, how do we then articulate that to electoral strategy to get folks elected? And I think if we do those combination of things, I think we are going to see the kind of impact that we would like to see in Wisconsin. So I think we should be really focusing on organizing plans and then turning them into electoral actions that we can do over. Hey, Jane. Uh, next up is James. Go ahead. Yeah, I wanted to uh, support what Tom and Bruce had to say about reaching out to people of different backgrounds um, and just give a little of my own experience um, as a new member, relatively new member of the Green Party. Um, it doesn't surprise me, frankly, that the numbers are small and that, like Tom said, people are leaving um, because they're disillusioned because I'm been here for only a few months and I'm already disillusioned, <laughs> just to be honest. Uh, I'll just speak from my own personal experience. I know some of you guys know I went to the Rage Against the War Machine rally um, in DC and I was uh, I had a great time there and there were a lot of speakers who I think would have been perfectly at home with a Green Party rally wherever. There was Jill Stein, who uh, was our candidate in 2016, et cetera, et cetera, and Dennis Kucinich and, and on and on. Um, but I just would ask the um, co-chairs and the membership to consider how uh, one might feel when um, a new member of the Green Party wants to go to a rally to spread the green word um, and is um, willing to um, co you know, uh, get new members and, and then uh, and the, the national has endorsed the rally. I mean, not not sponsored it, but has endorsed it. Um, but yet, um, when I return, I, I see the uh, Wisconsin Green Party disavow it and say lots of things about it. And then the co-chair today, Dave, calls some people, you know, repellent people who we can't organize with, meaning libertarians. I mean, personally, I have a brother who's a libertarian, and um, and I, I, so I, um, I just want to convey my sense of personal disappointment um, and um, discomfort with the uh, process here, because you know I joined the membership committee a couple months ago. I'm willing to be put to work. Uh, I'm willing to go out organizing for the Green Party. I put a, a feeler out there about having in-person meetings again in Madison. That was. A month or two ago, I haven't heard about anything about that. Um, of course, I went to the rally and, you know, I feel kind of vilified for doing that. Uh, but yet I'm going to continue to try to reach out to people who uh, are different than me. And even if they're libertarians, because as I said, I have a libertarian who's a brother or a brother who's a libertarian. <laughs> so I would appreciate... Um, more embracing of uh, ideological diversity within the party, specifically this Wisconsin branch. I mean, we have a platform of free speech uh, on the national platform. Um, it doesn't seem like that's being um, upholded in the Wisconsin Green Party. I feel like my free speech rights are sort of uh, not being respected here. Um, and I would also appreciate some decentralization of authority here. Um, with all respect to Sam, Dave, and Melissa, y'all are on all the committees, <laughs> and I feel like all the decisions run through you. So um, if I want to have an in-person meeting in Madison, I feel like it has to go through you. And uh, so anyway, that's my free speech pitch, and uh, I would like to uh, do my part in Madison to um, get new members, you know. Uh, Dave, Sam, Melissa, like I said, we all live in the same town. Um, I'm in Texas now on vacation, but I'll go out to coffee with you. I'll explain my position. 
And if you want me to go to work with you, then, you know, put me to work. But I ask that you consider my feelings when, you know, I go to a rally, I travel to the East Coast and I try to represent the party, but then uh, you put something up on the, um, on the uh, website that calls the libertarians and other people repellent people. Um, so by, and y'all have never called me, y'all never called me to ask me how I thought the rally went. So I feel marginalized as a member of the Green Party. Um, and if y'all want to keep me, then put me to work, you know, and respect the ideological diversity that I'm trying to bring. I'll pass. Thanks, James. Okay. Um, all right, so uh, next on stack is me. Um, yeah, and yeah, I'm, I'm confused that uh, someone would say their free speech is not being respected while they're using a meeting that I'm facilitating uh, to personally attack me and um, my comrades who did a lot of work to prepare for this meeting. Um, but yeah, I let you uh, say your piece and I didn't jump in to correct any of the falsehoods that you were saying about me. Um, however, I happen to be next on stack, so I will respond uh, momentarily. But what I did get on stack uh, to say was that um, because there was a comment about activists and candidates, um, I wanted to say, so there's been some recent discussion about um, you know, how there have been candidates who have come to the Wisconsin Green Party or our local chapters asking for our endorsement, um, you know, saying that they'll work for us, that they won't take corporate money, they'll join the Green Party, they uh, support our all values, et cetera. And then, you know, they seem like great candidates and then we endorse them, we help them get elected. And then after that, they start to drift away. Um, you know, some of that might be on us for not engaging enough with them and, you know, really working to try to help them and, and you know, give them ways to get involved in the Green Party. But yeah, I mean, it has happened that people will drift away and they'll join the Democratic Party uh, or you know, sometimes they will join a Democratic Party front group like the Working Families Party. We had an organizer who was offered a paid job with the Working Families Party and said, sorry, I gotta take this uh, and I gotta leave the Green Party now. So. You know, that's unfortunately a familiar story. And, you know, we've seen earlier on in Green Party days, we had, um, you know, candidates around the state, chapters around the state. And, you know, many of those people have joined the Democratic Party, or maybe they've just kind of left politics or activism. Uh, you know, I've seen people who, I worked with um, for years in the Green Party and, uh, you know, I, who I really looked up to and who were kind of mentors and, um, you know, it, I've seen them leave, join the Democratic Party and, uh, you know, and of course it hurts and uh, it's always a bitter disappointment. Um, and yeah, you know, I referred earlier to the many, many obstacles and you know, difficulties of building an independent political movement in this country, but there's the constant you know, push and pull, the carrot and stick, the sticks of all the attacks on the Green Party and efforts to kick us off the ballot and smear campaigns and everything. Then there, um, you know, not smear campaigns. <laughs> like we just heard. Um, and there's also the, uh, you know, the, the constant carrots of Democratic Party. We're going to reform the Democratic Party. You know, we're the Working Families Party. We're the Democratic Socialists who are working in the Democratic Party. Um, you know, 
the Bernie Sanders camp. Now there's the Marianne Williamson campaign. Marianne Williamson is going to take over the Democratic Party, everybody, um, and change it. Uh, so, you know, we have to deal with that. But I think the last point I want to make about this is that in my experience, I mean, it's not a hard and fast rule. And of course, it's very subjective. But when we have candidates who are grounded in the community, who are community activists, and they um, decide to run for office, and all, you know, very often that's local office, not always, but very often. You know, Cheryl McFarland ran for state office, and she was a very grounded community activist. But many of our local candidates are community activists, and usually the community activists are not only our best candidates, but they're the ones who stick around and they come back to the Green Party and they keep coming back and asking, hey, what do you guys think about this issue? Hey, can you help me organize around this issue? And then they'll stay with the party and they'll come back and say, yeah, I'm still in the Green Party. I'm running again and I, and I want your help. Whereas the people who go through the kind of usual Democrat industrial complex, you know, they may be very nice and progressive sounding young people who say, yeah, I, you know, I went through a candidate training program for progressive leadership and I support your values and I'm all about the environment. So endorse me, but you know, there are people who are looking at a political career and very, and, you know, not just a political career, but a political career within the current system. And, you know, I think those are very often the people who will just kind of use our endorsement and then, you know, move on up and leave us behind. Um, and that certainly doesn't help the Green Party. And, um, yeah, and it doesn't help us to build. So I think getting more active in community movements and issues and getting more active in politics have to go together. We can't do just one or the other because if we just focus on getting more candidates without being more active in issues, then we'll just get people who want to be professional politicians. Um, if we just work on the issues without focusing on electoral politics, then the politicians will continue to uh, do the bare minimum, you know, that they can to keep the movements from kicking them out of office. So, so that's what I wanted to say about that. Um, yeah, so, you know, regarding what I was just saying, I mean, um, you know, I never, I mean, we did discuss the Rage Against the War Machine at our Four Lakes Green Party meeting. Um, and none of this came up, uh, or very little of it came up that, uh, you know, was all just kind of thrown out an attack on myself and others. Um, and yeah, there's no, there's no email from James or anything about these issues. So if you wanted to talk about the issues, it's kind of strange that uh, you wouldn't contact us whatsoever about them. Um, and also you said that we said that libertarians are repellent people. And that's not true. Um, you know, what we said is that Rage Against the War Machine prominently featured a lineup of speakers known for racism, anti-Semitism, transphobia, homophobia, pro-war views, sexual misconduct, and anti-vaccine advocacy. These two featured speakers were employees of Russian state media. And the event was attended enthusiastically received by a variety of neo-fascists, cultists, war supporters, many of them flying Russian flags, members of white supremacist groups. And critically, these elements didn't just show up as unwelcome guests, but starting from the featured speakers and sponsoring organizations, the lead organizers deliberately fostered an atmosphere that not only tolerated, but encouraged right-wing extremists and pro-war forces to attend. Um, the self-appointed lead organizers, Angela McCardle of the Libertarian Party's far-right Mises Caucus and Nick Brana of the 
so-called People's Party, registered Rage Against the War Machine as their own private corporation and raised over $100,000 over the course of planning and promoting the event. Um, and it's a mystery what that's going to be used for. Uh, so, you know, Nick Braun has been the self-appointed leader of the so-called People's Party since 2017, during which time he's continued to raise money but has not run any campaigns, petitioned for ballot access in any states, or even held a convention where members could draft a platform of bylaws. And numerous ex-members of the Movement for a People's Party have called it a top-down undemocratic organization. There are members who dissent from Brana's decrees or who ask for greater democracy, transparency, or accountability have been repeatedly purged. And, um, you know, that lack of transparency also extends to their finances. And Nick Brana has hidden those from scrutiny by appointing his own father as the treasurer. Uh, and he carried out his latest purge of People's Party members when he was under investigation within the party for allegations of serious misconduct, including sexual abuse of a staff member. Um, and I don't wanna dwell on this too much longer, but as an example of who we actually refer to as repellent people. So Rage Against the War Machine featured speaker Jackson Hinkle, who's also connected to the Center for Political Innovation, has vehemently supported Russia's invasion of Ukraine. So he's a pro-war activist. He has sold t-shirts with the Z symbol used by the Russian invading forces. He advocates for Putin to fully conquer and take over Ukraine. And he regularly makes fascistic statements like, God will liberate Ukraine from the Satanists. That's a direct quote. And then speaking of the Center for Political Innovation, that's one of the sponsors of the Rage Against the War Machine rally. So they advocate for an ideology of MAGA communism, uh, which is kind of like national socialism. So they invited Matt Heimbach and Shandon Simpson, who are neo-Nazi organizers of the 2017 Unite the Right rally in Charlottesville, where a fascist murdered a counter-protester. Uh, so they invited these Nazis to the rally and the CPI after party, where they had a recruitment booth for the rebranded re organization, the Patriotic Socialist Front. And uh, so this group of neo-Nazis flew Russian imperial flags at the rally. Um, so there's, there's a lot more information on, on you know, who we were referring to. Uh, so I'll, you know, I'll just stop there and direct people to the actual statement. Um, but yeah, so, you know, I, I, I'm sorry, James, that you, uh, you know, felt you needed to bring this up in this forum instead of just contacting us with your concerns. But um, yeah, so I'll, I'll share the statement there and I'll, I'll pass. And um, I will ask Sam to let us know who's next on stack. Sure. Um, I think I might be the next person on <laughs> stack. Uh, so I'll, I'll keep my comments brief. Um, I knew this was coming. Uh, we, we had raised these concerns. Uh, earlier uh, in the week when we found out that um, some folks uh, who are in attendance here um, went and uh, used the name of the Wisconsin Green Party to co-organize an event without um, the support of the party. Um, prior to that, uh, the rally had come up in the Forex Green Party. Melissa and I responded to it. We asked for input from the other members of the Four Legs Green Party. Nobody else was interested in the issue. That didn't surprise me. We're in the middle of endorsing our local candidates. And based on the um, feedback that we received from our members on the survey, that's what they're interested in. They're interested in local issues. They're interested in in, in their water quality, their air quality, in, in, in the state of, of local uh, municipal politics. Um, 
was besides that, uh, mm. I'm not aware of any attempt that was made to seek input from the broader membership. There were several attempts to seek input from the party leadership. The party leadership who is elected to represent the party membership. And multiple times there, uh, the folks who ended up not supporting the event um, expressed their concerns. Um, and, and so I, I suppose what, what I would say to that is that if you wanna build support for um, an issue within a political organization, you need to put in the work. You need to go out and reach out to the people who are going to be your supporters on that issue. Um, it, was, it, was, it was clear, I think, early on that the coordinating council was not in favor of this. If folks wanted to see that change, what they should have done is they should have reached out to the constituent of members of the coordinating council and gotten them to reach out to the members of the coordinating council so that their um, opinions would be reflected in the decision. That didn't happen. In Four Lakes, we asked when the topic came up and we did not receive any um, indication that there was support for it. Um, and then also to this broader issue of uh, ideological diversity. Um, to that, I would say that you can't really house bigots and the, tar and the targets of bigotry in the same movement because the folks that are going to be targeted by the bigots once this rally is over are not going to want to come to your rally or go to a rally that is organized by these individuals because they're going to fear for their safety. They're going to fear that if they give contact information at those events, that it might end up in some set of hands which would compromise them. So I think that we need to stop framing this in a simplistic, let's just organize with everybody because we can't organize with everybody. We have to make some choices about whether we stand on the side of the marginalized or we stand on the side of those who seek to defend the marginalization of people. And so I think that that played a substantial role in our decision to not support the rally. Um, we voted on it and um, we've posted public statements. We've received positive feedback on those public statements. Um, and finally, I just want to uh, also mention that when we were um, approached um, with, you know, concerns about do we want to, um, you know, organize um, an anti-war event, I, I sought out an event which was not going to um, create these types of dilemmas for us that had essentially the same set of demands. And I heard very little back about about supporting them. I've heard nothing about organizing um, events in March. So I just would urge people to focus more on organizing and growing the party instead of like trying to play these um, circle politics where so, such and such a group is on one side, such and such a group is on the other side. And like, it's, it's, it's just very exhausting. And I just really hope that we can, in the coming year, foster a more positive environment where we're not seeking out issues that are gonna divide us. And we instead focus on issues which are going to, um, you know, bring us together, get people um, energized, make us feel good. Um, we owe that to um, to the candidates that were running for elected office to not be um, to not be engaging in in these types of internal device politics. Pass.
Okay. Um, who is next on stack? Um, I sorry, there's a lot in the chat, so let me take a quick look to see if anyone's on stack. And you know, again, we have uh, you know touched on this issue. Uh, oh, Bill, I see that Bill is on stack, but you know, I just wanted to point out. Okay, and Barbara is also on stack. Um, so. Yeah, I wanted to, you know, say that, okay, this is a discussion that uh, recently did happen in the party. Uh, some people didn't respect the democratic decision of the party. Um, and, you know, that's unfortunate, but I can understand why people want to talk about this today. Um, even if I don't personally think that it's productive. Um, and yeah, we are a democratic organization. So, uh, you know, we are having an open discussion, but um, it would be great if after people say their piece on this, that we can then return to the actual topic of the conversation, which is um, how to uh, build the Wisconsin Green Party by focusing on issues that matter to the people of Wisconsin. Um, so that said, Barbara's on stack and Bill's on stack. Go ahead, Barbara. Yeah, have a seat. Can you hear me? Yes. So, um, Everybody's talking about this in a roundabout way, but everybody's talking about me. I'm the one who supposedly didn't respect the democratic, um, the, uh, the democratic consensus or whatever, the uh, six to two votes by going and participating in the Rage Against the War Machine rally myself. As I said, I was going to do, as I organized that I was going to do, and then I did it. Everybody knows me around my area as the Green Party lady, whether or not anybody likes that. Uh, it is what it is because I'm out in public representing the Green Party at all times, no matter what. It's just who I am in this area. We have a, um, an End the Wars Committee in Milwaukee that we are tied to, as Mike said so earlier. The committee was the one that organized our sister movement, our sister uh, picket and uh, rally. There is no misinformation that I spread to anybody. I never talked to WIS politics. I never said anything, but there has been an extreme and ridiculous reaction from um, the leaders that are listed on this letter that's posted on our website. Um, and there was no consultation with me who, you know, I'm the secretary of the party. So you'd think that somebody would loop me in on this. I don't know if Bill was contacted. I don't know if uh, the rest of the coordinating council was contacted before this letter was posted. This extremely uh, provocative and um, full of misinformation itself, by the way, this letter. I've asked for a retraction. Um, and I think it's extremely inappropriate that these members have decided to blow up the national committee list with at least 500 emails before organizing this event right here, which is why we have, you know, probably only a dozen people here. Um, I've worked with this party for so much of my life, and I've worked in this particular part of the party for much of my life, and I really do not like being called um, you know, right wing adjacent, bigot adjacent, um, just anti trans and bigoted because I participated in a peace demonstration. And that's exactly what um, these kinds of letters say. What is the point of calling for unity if you're going to call anybody who tries to do anything um, a bigot adjacent or, you know, any of these words that, that are being used to describe us? What is the point of, of saying that you're in for unity and that you agree with the same issues of peace if you're going to just 
um, decide that anybody that you disagree with based on who they've talked to or what they've done is a bigot. By the way, I have a degree in media and we taught whole classes on how um, protests were, have always been presented in mainstream media. And I understand as well that whenever you have a protest, as there was um, in the um, George Floyd movement and all of these major movements, they're provocateurs. So you find the two people with a crazy flag, you find the one person that's crazy or you know out there, and you say, oh, that's the entire march, that's the entire protest. Who cares that Jill Stein had a thunderous applause uh, when she spoke? Who cares that Dennis Kucinich um, called on the Senate to investigate um, the Nord Stream pipeline explosion? Who cares about all that? It's all a bunch of bigots. It's all the worst kind of people that we should never associate with. Well, guess what? Most of America has opinions that some of us find um, a little out there. Um, some people are very focused on certain things like vaccine skepticism, which actually isn't a bad thing. It's not something that's against our party values to be a vaccine skeptic, especially in these days when vaccines don't actually prevent anything. So, you know, I, I completely resent what has been going on this past week it's completely uncharacteristic of what we usually do in the Green Party. And I'm trying to keep my composure about it because I've been completely looped out of everything, which is, in, is completely against our rules and undemocratic. So I've called for a retraction of that statement that Dave just read. And I hope that we can move on from this. And I hope that people will actually organize for future peace rallies that they supposedly support. I was there with Bill at the UNAC rally in January and we had um, a lovely showing. We had some pictures. I wrote a report. None of that appeared on our social media for some reason. Um, and many of the people who talk about wanting to be involved in these peace rallies are very proud of never talking to other humans or leaving their homes because they think that COVID is here forever. We are out here in a library right now. Um, people are out doing work. It's three years later. We need to get back in person. The Rage Against the War Machine rally, um, among so many other protests that have gone on in the last three years, have proven that we need to be out there in the streets with the public and not up in ivory towers or chairs or whatever um, in our, our own homes on Zoom. We need to be together and organizing together. And so I'm, I'm glad that the Rage Against the War Machine kicked a bunch of the peace activists in the butt to keep going and organizing a lot stronger. And I hope that each rally um, beyond it is 10 times stronger and 100 times stronger. And I hope that we can get together and move on instead of just calling anybody who organized anything or anybody who participated a whole bunch of names and act like what the mainstream media does, which is completely discredit things, even though um, it, has, it shouldn't be discredited. It was actually a really good event um, and, and really unifying. In fact, I got a whole bunch of names um, on my list from my little event. And um, I talked with the few libertarians who showed up about food sovereignty and what they feel about it. And guess what? They feel similarly to the Greens about that issue, particularly. Uh, which is very important to people to be able to eat these days. So that's just about all I've got to say. Um, I appreciate uh, people being able to listen to that. I, I hope that you can hear me because um, this, is, this is a big part of, um, of my life. I've, I've spent a lot of time here and I'm, I'm not any of those things. I'm not a neo-Nazi um, or adjacent to one. Um, and I don't think that we need to be using that language about people who organize peace rallies at all. Thanks. Uh, Bill, you're up next and then I'm on stack. Yeah, at first when um, particularly Dave, but also Sam went pretty long in their remarks, I thought to myself, that's not really fair. Uh, we should maintain a certain time frame on uh, speakers. 
But then on the other hand, I thought there was um, what I heard to be a comment or comments that had aspects of a personal um, attack on the co-chairs and the co-chairs felt uh, the need to respond to that. So I'll just note that. Um, we do have some significant differences on um, concept in terms of the, the methods we want to use in, in building the Green Party. I, I would use, explain it as um, how big a tent we should have. Um, I'm among those who believe that the tent should be a big tent but it should be it should have eco socialist on the on the uh, outside of it it's a party i want to build a party of the left an eco socialist party the green party uh, others in the organization have a more expansive notion they want a big tent that would move um very very far in a conservative direction or at least would it, it considers people with views that are outside that paradigm um, to be uh, the kind of people we want to focus on and orient to. So there's a, there's a difference here. But I, I think that we can work through this. I think we do need to dial things down a little bit, specifically on the, um, the uh, news release that came out and I saw it as well as others, uh, noting that the Wisconsin Green Party was endorsing demonst a demonstration that we had just we had just voted on not to to endorse. Um, that was um, that was shocking to me. But I I had hoped that we could uh, get to the bottom of that, find find out how that took place, and it should have been something we could have sorted out in the coordinating council. Unfortunately, we're having that discussion right right now. But I would like to return to something that Sam brings up over and over again, and I very, very much agree with it. If you would do an inventory of the beliefs and commitments and outlook of everybody in this room, do an inventory and then compare the lists, you'd find that there's an awful lot that we hold in common. It's like 80, 90%. And if we would focus on those areas that we hold in common, we would have a lot more productive meetings and we wouldn't be going through this cycle of um, attack and counterattack, which is not very productive. It can really lead in a toxic direction. So I would just encourage people to dial it down a little bit and think once again about the broad areas of agreement that we have. And that includes everybody in this room. And if we keep that in mind, keep our eyes on the prize, I think we'll, um, we'll be able to position ourselves effectively to build this organization in a, in a, in a spirit that uh, we can all feel um, comfortable with and proud of. So I'll pass on that. Thank you, Bill. Um, yeah. And, you know, I definitely agree with what Bill has just said. Um, you know, the, the thing is, as much as this is not the conversation that I want to be having, at least not in this time and place, um, you know, this is the issue that has come up but not just an issue that has come up, but attacks on not only myself, but I'm used to being attacked. I mean, I've been a green for a while. I've been doing work for a while. And when you put in work in the green party, then you get attacked uh, often by people who, um, you know, aren't putting in work, but you know, that uh, I'm not saying that Barbara hasn't put in a lot of work for the green party because you certainly have. Um, the, you know, the, on the rally issue, you asked that we listen to you and we have been listening to you and we, and we just listened to you about it. And, uh, the problem is that you're not listening, not only to me, you're not listening to the majority of the democratically elected representatives in the Green Party Coordinating Council, and you're 
not listening to a whole lot of greens who you disagree with. And I don't want to harp on the issue, but we have proven that sponsors of the Rage Against the War Machine rally invited literal neo-Nazis to the rally to recruit. Um, so I'm not saying that you that anyone who went to the rally is a Nazi. But if you went to the rally, then you were literally Nazi adjacent. Adjacent means near or next to. If the rally organizers invited Nazis to the rally, then everyone who went to the rally, whether they like it or not, was Nazi adjacent. And I know that's not what they wanted, but there were so many red flags that we tried to warn you about. And like I said before, the fastest way to discredit and destroy the Green Party and the movements that we care about is to blunder into terrible mistakes like this without listening to the many people who are trying to raise the red flags. So I'm begging people to actually listen and not to, uh, you know, think that I, <laughs> I'm using the word Nazi lately because I'm not. Um, but when you have neo-Nazis who organized a rally where, where white supremacists killed a counter protester. That's not, that's not a safe, that, that's not safe people to be organizing with. Um, not for white people, but definitely not for marginalized people. Okay. And I wish I could believe what you were saying, but you say, oh, you, you weren't contacted about this until now. And I texted you days ago, Barbara, asking to, you know, just forward me the email that you sent to the Libertarian Party because we saw, okay, the Libertarian Party, there's a news report saying that we endorsed this event that we had clearly voted not to endorse. So we tried to figure out what's going on and meanwhile, um, all over the National Party, people are saying, oh, look, the Wisconsin Green Party endorsed this event, too. Um, and <laughs> we, we had talked about this. And for all these reasons that were mentioned, we voted not to endorse it. So uh, as you know, the co-chairs and National Committee delegates, um, you know, we put out a statement to the, to the National Party and, you know, the co-chairs are uh, one of the responsibilities is to, you know, convey the democratically made decisions of the coordinating council. So because we had made a decision not to endorse the rally for all these reasons, we put out a statement about that. OK, at the same time, we're trying to figure out why is the media saying that we did the opposite of what we actually did, the Libertarian Party chairperson said that Barbara Dahlgren contacted him signing her emails as the secretary of the Wisconsin Green Party. Okay, so Barb, I asked you to forward me the email that you sent to the Libertarian Party and you didn't respond until yesterday to tell me that you saw the texts, but for some reason, you didn't want me to see the emails that you're sending as the secretary of the Wisconsin Green Party. So I wish I could believe you, but um, I don't understand why you are, uh, I mean, again, I uh, am not attacking the libertarians at all. They're a competing political party and uh, I have many disagreements with them, but, um, but I really wonder why, Barbara, you are emailing the Libertarian Party in your official capacity as an officer of the Green Party, but you feel like I don't have the right to see those emails. Um, so I wish I could believe what you're saying, but I can't. Uh, pass. I don't know who's on stack. I need to take a break. I'll, I'll pass it over to Sam. 
Uh, I believe Bruce is on the stack. Okay, this is kind of a point of information request. According to our constitution, each co-chair shall serve for two years with staggered terms, but there's no seat, so, so there is a senior and a junior chair. All reasonable efforts shall be made to rotate chair roles throughout the membership of the organization. All other officers shall serve one, your terms, all offices except for co-chairs may be elected to successive terms. Um, the idea of uh, term limits has been part of the green movement since the 70s, instituted in Germany and the European Greens. And it's part of our constitution and part of the GPUS constitution by law. Seems to me Dave has served more than four years. So I'd like an answer on that. How many year, consecutive years has David Schwab served as coach? Okay. Um, I mean, I can answer that. Uh, yeah, so this I believe would be the fourth year. Um, it is true uh, that co-chairs are not meant to serve consecutive terms. Um, at the time um, when Dave was elected for a second term, um, there were no other candidates uh, for it. Um, so, I mean, point of fact. Um, I, I guess I would question why this is being brought up now. Seems a little bit um, just like um, uh, instrumental uh, opportunistic, but um, yeah, I mean, though, those are uh, the facts of it, um, yes. Go ahead, Joe Nathan. Oh, hello. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Well, it just seems like there's a lot of, um, you know, immediate emotion going on. And I mean, everybody wants to have their full expression. And, you know, I just, you know, I, I hope we can agree to disagree on some of this stuff and uh, just, you know, for the greater good of existing, continuing to exist as an institution and a party, I, I hope we can all take a breather. And um, right, so it's real. We're airing our our feelings and uh, thinking aloud, life conversation. And I, I just hope, um, you know, yeah, you know, Bill's point. We, we're mostly all the, you know, on the same page. And right, we got personalities, and we've got you know hum, humanness, and we got humanity. So let's, uh, you know, we're towards the end of time, and um, we we achieve ballot line access we've got this lined up we've got lots of lots of uh, really positive things lined up so um i just you know ask everybody to kind of uh take a breath and step back and um you know there's lots of perspective and and uh i mean we're we're, we're coordinating and surfing off really good stuff and just let's not get too far off track with with uh human needs and human uh humanness thank you pass Thanks, Joe Nathan. I really appreciate you saying that. Um, looks like next up we have Bill. Well, I'd like to do a little rah-rah, just like Nathan as well, you know. Um, it was way back in the 1960s, and like Bruce, uh, we probably got involved in politics about the same time, and I've been at it ever since. And you know what, folks? We'll get through this one, just like we have the other ones where we've had disputes in the past. We just need to sort this out. We need to figure out what happened. We need to be mindful that there are people in the room who have different perspectives on how to build the organization. And um, we, we need to listen to each other. We need to communicate better. Uh, we need to be respectful. We need to dial it down, as I said before, 
And um, I don't know. I mean, if this was the first time I'd ever heard a debate and discussion like this before, I'd be a little more concerned, but I've heard it before. And uh, we just need to remind ourselves of why it is we got involved in this in the first place. We need to once again remind ourselves of just how much we have in common with each other. It's not by accident that we're all in this party together and in the same room together. We share an awful lot uh, in terms of our outlook and approach and our values. So we need to refocus on what we have in common. I wish we had spent a little more time uh, in, in this discussion here talking about how we're going to reach out, recruit more people. We, we certainly were on that track earlier in the discussion. It would have been far more beneficial for what we're all trying to build toward if we had continued on that track. I found the uh, IT report fascinating in terms of uh, uh, all that we stand to gain by being better attuned at taking advantage of uh, the tools that, that the IT committee can provide us. And uh, I, I found the discussion we, we got started on with membership was, was very useful. Uh, it got us really thinking about, well, what have we actually got and what, 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 what can we work toward? Uh, how can we do this? How can we make our committees more effective and so on? That's what we, we really should be focusing on. And, um, but you know, this, this conversation took place because some things have happened and we've got to sort it out and we'll sort it out and then we'll get back to work. So uh, bear that in mind. I'll pass on that note. Thanks, Bill. Uh, really just want to echo what Bill and Joe Nason have said. Um, we can be strong together or we can be set against each other. Um, let's use our strengths to grow the party, grow the movement, make a better world. Um, let's not spend so much of our energy fighting each other in this meeting. Um, so next up on the stack, we have Tom. I'm, I'm just thinking about historically look, people looking back on the Green Party and I've stayed away from an issue and I'm not, this is, should not be divisive because I'm gonna couch it in such a way that it shouldn't be divisive. Um, I just wanna alert people that I think practice of medicine since the beginning of the pandemic year and prior to that, it no longer exists. Hospitals are no longer safe places to go. They've been corporatized. So healthcare has gone way, way backward. Doctors do not have the discretion they need to practice medicine. And this is a whole huge topic related to the pandemic, but I just want it to be on record. I don't need any debate or anything about the past. Thanks, Tom. Um, I think that's it for the stack, and we are coming up on the top of the hour. Um, I don't know uh, if other folks want to uh, stick around and, and keep having this discussion. Um, I, I'd, be, I'd be happy to, to have a discussion that is more positive and focused on what we're going to be doing going forward um, on essentially the, the things that are going to make us a stronger party. Uh, I don't really think that we need to keep talking about this same topic, uh, especially within the, uh, you know, context of, um, of the rally, which, uh, itself to me is kind of a past issue. Um, we had to release some stuff, you know, correcting, um, misinformation that went out there, but, uh, I don't think that we really need to dwell on that. All right. Um, cool. Thanks, Bruce. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm good with the journey at three. Um, all right. Uh, I'm good with the journey at three. I'm good at 
also with adjourning right now, uh, if nobody has anything else they want to say, if anybody else does have anything they want to say, please keep it positive. Please Green do not end and growing. This. Yeah, exactly. Green and growing. See y'all. All right, everybody. Thanks. Have a good day. Uh, sure. James, did you want to say something? Uh, looks like James already exited. Oh, he was waving goodbye. Okay. Yeah. All right. All right. Uh, everybody have a good day. Yeah, it's, it's uh, 2.58. So we are almost at our time. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks everyone for joining us today, uh, especially some of the new folks and uh, you know, folks who um, at least I haven't seen in a little bit. Um, it's good to see you all. And um, yeah, really appreciate your commitment and you know, coming in and spending a few hours with us on a Saturday. Uh, you could have been anywhere else, but you chose to be here, and I greatly appreciate that, um, as we all do. So uh, thanks, everyone. And um, yeah, so um, I'm not sure uh, if how many folks want to talk. Um, so I, I see only one comment, someone who wants to stay longer to talk, but um, I will you know, leave my information here. Um, AJ, I would love to talk and uh, anyone else here, if you want to talk about organizing, um, let me know. And I will, um, Yep, just put my contact info in the chat. Please don't share that beyond this group. Um, but yeah, um, if you're a Wisconsin Green Party member and you want to talk about organizing, let me know. Uh, great. All right, well, thanks again, everyone. It's 3 o'clock. We're going to end right on time in a historic event. And have a great day. Peace. Bye, everybody. Thank you.